This week I'm going to be making some fancy modular terrain and I'm under a time crunch. So I'm going to be designing, printing, painting and preparing a fully modular fancy ballroom for a gala episode we're running over at Tomes and Tales RPG. You see, our DM has been teasing us for a little while about this royal gala that our players will be attending. So last week he reached out and asked if I could build us the ballroom. So we have less than two weeks to fully design and prepare this build for the table. So let's see if we can get this fully designed, printed out and ready for our table in the small amount of time that we've been given. I took this as the perfect opportunity to bust out Town Builder to make something custom. This is the fantasy town building set from Townsmith. With all these different options in styles, we can grab some bits and pieces that we want and start puzzling them together. I did something very similar recently with their sci-fi version of Battlefield Builder. I've been really excited to play around with their fantasy sets. As you can see, they have a lot of different options to choose from. So you just pick the bits that you think will fit your design best and puzzle them all together. I've picked some fancy floors, I'm adding a dance floor into the center, and originally just using some plain bricks. I then played around with some staircases and got myself a decent sort of ballroom, but it wasn't quite right. So I gave myself a little bit of time and decided to come back to it later on. Unfortunately, I lost all of the footage of the second batch of edits where I went back in and really made things look a little bit fancier and really made those stairs come to life. But this is what I ended up with. I cleaned up the stairs a lot and grouped them together. Then taking all of our individual pieces, highlighting large elements and grouping these together to give us a better split to print with. Also by making them more modular, it means that we can reuse them in a few different ways and hopefully make some extra parts in the future. I'm going to export this, bring it over to my slicing software and then get it ready for the printer. So we get that going and after a few hours we have our first piece printed. This came out looking nice and clean, so it's time to get printing on the rest. Over the next few days I printed out every single piece of our ballroom. And then I need to clean up these supports, so I got to peeling. Once I had everything printed out, I decided to go back in and add a couple of little extra layers to a second floor. So I designed and printed out these small balconies that will sit in the top corners, bringing us up to the second level. I made these with some connection points for magnets. So I'm going to grab out some small neodymium earth magnets and stick these in all of the connection holes. I'm using the lighter here just to melt the PLA a little bit and then pushing the magnets in to make sure that they fit nice and snug. Then when they're all in flush, I'll go around and add some glue to keep them all in place. I also added the connection points into the rear walls where I wanted them before I printed out these sections of the model. So they will also get some magnets and a little bit of glue to hold them all in place, leaving us with a removable magnetized balcony. Now let's throw everything together to make sure we have all of our parts and that they sit nicely in place. And there we have a build ready to paint. So I'm going to grab out some grey primer and start blasting the entire model, making sure to get into all the nooks and crannies, but trying to hit it lightly enough not to fill in any of our details. And then we wait for that to dry. Once everything has a good base grey, so everything matches, I'm going to come in with a cheap white spray paint that has a glossy finish. Ideally I want this to look like nice fancy white gloss tiles. So these cheaper spray paints are going to work perfectly as long as we get them spread over the entire build. It's looking pretty good. My print job wasn't perfect. I think I need to tweak up my settings because we see a few of those print lines in here. But ultimately this is taking shape nicely for what I want. Now we're going to grab one of these pieces and all of those little tiny squares in the middle are going to get hit with a polished gold. Now this took some time. 
It is very small and intricate painting, and there are a lot of them. So to get this done over the entire build, I spent a good few hours painting tiny golden tiles. And it was worth it because these look awesome. It came out exactly how I wanted, giving a really nice effect for a fairly basic paint job. Now I'm going to take that same polished gold and apply it to all of the other flourishes across our design. So focusing on these doorways and the doors, then coming in over all of our banisters and handrails for the stairs and balconies. Really trying to keep that bright gold element popping out over the entire build. For these small balconies, I decided to test out doing all of the railings in gold, and I think I like this and will do it for the rest of our model. For the next gold element, I tried using a cheaper gold acrylic paint. I wanted to cover up all of these larger bricks around the center dance floor, but this paint looked awful. There was almost no pigment and it didn't want to stick down, so I wiped this away and came in with the same polished gold. Originally trying to avoid it because this stuff is a lot more expensive, but deciding the other stuff just wasn't good enough. And to tell you the truth, I wasn't quite happy with this one spread over these larger areas either. So eventually, I ended up covering all of the center tiles with some masking tape and taking this outside and hitting it with a gold spray paint. So there's another night of drying. And the next day we're left with a nice and even gold coverage. But I want it to match, so I got out that polished gold again and used a makeup brush to stipple it all over, giving this sort of dusted gold look, which looked amazing when I peeled away our tape for some nice sharp edges. It wasn't quite right, so I did have to clean this up later, but for now, I decided to test out a blue ink on these center tiles, as I wasn't quite sure what I wanted for this center dance floor. The other option was a pure black. So I taped off my gold areas, really aiming for these lines to be perfect this time and gave the entire thing a coat in a cheap black acrylic paint. I was happy to use a gloss again as these are meant to be some fancy looking tiles so the cheap acrylics work just fine. When I peeled my tape away I took away a whole heap of my gold though. Because of this I did have to take them off again and repaint the gold but that was a fairly simple process. Comparing the two different paint options side by side, I went with the black as I really just wasn't a fan of how that blue ink sat. So I went with the black, but I decided to come in and add a whole heap of little silver highlights over these stars on the center of the pattern. So it's not just a pure black. It's fun experimenting with different types of color schemes and knowing you can always go back and change it if you aren't completely happy. That's the fun of these builds. It is your world and you can do what you like. After we finish painting all of our bits and pieces, we're gonna grab out these doors and slide a little bit of filament into these gaps to give us a working door hinge. Now we can put our entire model together and see our full ready to play ballroom. And there we go. It's been just over a week and we have fully designed, printed, painted and built a modular, playable ballroom. There's a lot more I could have done to this. We could have gone over with a heap of washes to really fill in those gaps. But personally, I didn't want it to look too dirty. And we had a deadline. So we now have, in the space of a week, designed, printed and painted a fully capable, fancy looking ballroom for our D&D game fully equipped with a dance floor, playable stairs, and a spot for some lookouts. And it was a lot of fun at the table. If you want to see it in action, jump over to Tomes and Tales and watch our episode 15. So I'm probably going to use a bit more of Townsmith in the future for my one-off game build, as it's a great way to get something custom on the table. These come in bits and pieces and can be put together in a few different shapes, so we can make up a few different rooms using these tiles in the future. And if I design a few extra walls that match this style, we'll get even more playability out of this. If you guys want to try this out for yourself, Townsmith have given me a discount code that'll be in the description. They didn't sponsor this video, but they did give me access to their software. So I'm going to shout them out as much as I can because I love this stuff. And here's another example of something that Corson from over at Townsmith built with the system. 
This thing looks incredible and I hope to achieve something of this level at some point, but for now, we just needed a ballroom. I hope you guys have enjoyed this and if you want to see it in action, jump over to Tomes and Tales RPG where our episode 15 will be up very shortly if it's not already there. So, until next time, never stop making stuff. And if you're interested in seeing the sci-fi version of this same software, check out this video here.